people of God in whose name you make requests of one another, beware of severing ties of kinship. God is always watching over you. So, Assalamu alaikum, my dearest sisters and brothers in creation. Juma Mubarak, very bright, wonderful day for Juma today. In today's khutbah, I intend on sharing some thoughts about the subject of gratitude, thankfulness, and gratefulness toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is gratitude all about? Why is it important? How does it benefit us as human beings? What are some pathways that we can go toward attaining these things? These are some of the things that I'll try to address in today's group. Now, gratitude is like one of the core pieces of our human relationship with the Divine, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gratitude helps focus our minds on Allah. Something that unfortunately can be kind of difficult in today's modern world. We have a lot of attractions, distractions, things that keep us busy. Um, but showing gratitude to Allah is part and parcel of having faith in Him. So this can also mean that somebody who is not grateful toward Allah has a weakness in their faith. And we may be all in a continuum. None of us are perfect. We all have gaps in our faith. Now, gratefulness to Allah can be expressed in many ways. Hopefully, most dearly in our hearts, also by how we speak on our tongues, and in our deeds and gestures. True gratefulness of the heart, though, is manifested through sincere belief that all blessings that we have, the known blessings, the unknown blessings, our very existence, our life, our body, our physical appearance, our abilities, our accomplishments, everything that you can think of and that you can't think of that has been given to us is from our Creator Allah. The Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, ayah 53, whatever blessing you have is from Allah. That's it. Whatever blessing we have is from God. And sometimes it's easy for us to forget that um, but it's just a good reminder for all of us to remember that. Gratefulness or thankfulness by the body is shown by using one's limbs, one's organs, one's faculties for abilities and purposes for which God created them. So not to do things with our bodies, with our hands, with our eyes that God dislikes, but only try to do things that God has prescribed for us. And it is reported that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to pray at night until his feet became swollen. I think many of us have heard these stories. And when he was asked why he was doing this, when Allah had already forgiven all his past and future misguides, his reply was, should I not be a grateful servant? I think many of us are aware of this story in Hadith. The Prophet, peace be upon him, always thanked Allah and recommended his followers to do so. And one of his favorite supplications, or du'as, was, O oh Allah, help me remember you, to be grateful to you, to worship you in an excellent manner. So let's quickly talk about these three pieces. To remember you. It's very easy for us to get caught up in our lives and think, you know, I achieved this, I achieved that. Yes, we put in an intention, we put in effort, but if we really think about it, we know that everything comes from God. So this is a reminder, it helps us, we're asking to make sure we don't become full of ourselves. The second part, to be grateful, so once we are acknowledging that these gifts are coming from a higher power, then to be grateful and thankful for that. And finally, to worship you in an excellent manner. Not just worship, not just go through the Salah, not just go through the dhikr, but to do it in an excellent manner. So to work every day a little bit better, to be a little bit more conscious. I know everybody at times when we're doing Salah, there's sometimes people forget which rakah they're in, they forget what they were saying. That's human, that happens. But every day, let's make a little bit stronger effort to be more focused, to be more cognizant of who we're worshiping. And the more we thank God, the closer we grow to our Creator. In Surah Baqarah, the second chapter, in Ayah 152, 
were reminded, so remember me, I will remember you, be thankful to me, and do not be ungrateful. So again, this concept of thankfulness and gratefulness and not to be ungrateful is emphasized. Now, Shaitan, Satan's ultimate goal is to make people disbelievers through ways and means that prevent them from being thankful. It's not, I mean, we often think of the very grave sins, and those are grave, definitely, very biggest transgressions. But it's openly declared in a conversation between Shaitan and Allah in the Quran, in Surah Al-Araf, the seventh chapter, Ayah 17, we're reminded, then I will surely come to them from before them, from behind them, from their right, from their left, and when you and you will find most of them ungrateful, not evil, not misguided, not ungrateful. And I think scholars have told us that the reason for this is that that's the first step. When we become ungrateful, we think gifts are from ourselves. And that's the first step to kind of turning away from the divine. So how important is it to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To develop a feeling of gratitude and consciousness of God's boundless favors. And the foremost task is to acknowledge and appreciate those favors. Now, it's a very common general weakness of human beings that if we're going through troubled times, we complain to others. However, a personal, often we hardly, hardly count the many blessings that we enjoy. And the Quran tells us in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, ayah 18, if you try to count the, if you try to count God's blessings, you would never be able to calculate them. God is ever forgiving and most merciful. But we should try to count the blessings, because that, that helps us. This is not for God, this is for our own personal training. So, I'm going to do a little silly, funny example of where we're coming from. A little reflection on the blessings we enjoy should hopefully help us realize how our lives will be miserable without them. So again, the silly, simple example. Do we truly thank God when we're coming out of, let's say, our restrooms after we're leaving ourselves? This is a thing that we take for granted, especially when we're healthy and young. But just imagine the unease one would feel, not to talk the pain and agony if one were not able to properly conduct those functions. There may be some here in this room who, because of illness or age, can appreciate that challenge and that once when we were young we just it was no big deal and as we grew older we, we, we are thankful for that that gift and it's not uncommon that's why we are reminded for the prophetic supplication to thank God after every time so all praise and thanks be to Allah who removed the difficulty and gave me ease so that's a supplication after being relieved of that difficulty. Now there are numerous prophetic supplications for different times and occasions that teach us to thank Allah for His blessings. And although thankfulness is a religious act of great significance, few people truly do it, Allah says. In Surah Saba, in chapter 34, ayah 13, we're told, few of my servants are truly thankful. So it's just a reminder, it's not a, a sentence that we're not going to make it. It's a, it's a reminder that we need to get back on the path toward thankfulness and gratefulness. Also, we should look to avoid at those who have been blessed or seem to have been blessed with more than us. And we should look to those who have less. And I say seem to because what's a blessing and what's not is very hard to divine. Somebody may be given a lot of material wealth, but it may be really a test. A test of what did they do when they get that wealth. Do they get more material things for themselves, or do they choose to give of that to those who don't have enough? So having a lot means you're asked to answer for a lot. 
And those who fail to do this are always complaining about their problems and never blessed with satisfaction or contentment. So that's one of the other things. If we can get into a pattern of thankfulness and gratefulness, I think one will find that you will become more content and satisfied with where you are in your life, that the plan that Allah has laid out. So these are, I would say, universal truths. What I've shown you so far, and I will additionally, these are quotes from the Quran, there's some hadiths. But an American president said something very similar. An American president once said, comparison is the thief of joy. Don't focus on what you don't have, don't focus on what your friends do have. This was President Teddy Roosevelt, about 110 years ago. So the, these lessons, these truths are pretty universal. And every tradition is reminded of these things. And it is impossible for anyone to be in a state that is in all respects better than everyone else. Not recognizing Allah's blessings can prevent us from gaining His pleasure. We know that if Allah were to punish us for our negligence, we, He would be very justified. And we are informed in the Quran, if Allah were to take people to task for what they have earned, He would not leave a single living creature on the face of the earth, but he grants them respite until the appointed time, and when their appointed time comes, then they will know that Allah is indeed observant of all his servants. So it's a cautionary ayah, but then Allah provides a way out of this. And he says, why should Allah punish you if you, have great, if you are grateful to him and believe in him? Allah is all appreciative and all known. Surah Nisa, chapter 4, ayah 147. Now, a lot of times in the Quran, when we read these things, all appreciative, all knowing, all compassionate, all beneficent, we read through them really quickly. But if we stop and think all appreciative, that means he appreciates every moment that you are thankful. When you have a bite to eat, and you are thankful, he appreciates that. When your spouse does that, he appreciates that. When your children, when all of humanity does that, each and every point of those points of thankfulness is acknowledged and appreciated by the Creator. So it's an amazing concept to think about. Now may, may Allah make us among those who sincerely praise Him and thank Him for all His blessings and favor. In, I'll conclude the, the first section of the Qutbah with this story. Sheikh Saadi, um, this is a Sheikh in, in Damascus, probably a couple of generations ago, he narrates a story in which he says that while he was traveling, he reached Damascus in a difficult physical condition. Very, you know, travel was difficult. He did not have any money to buy new shoes as his shoes had worn out to replace his old one. And it pained him that he was unable to buy new shoes. I think we can sort of identify with these things. Sometimes we think we need or want things and we are unable to for various reasons and we feel a little angst. With these thoughts, he entered the masjid where he observed a lame person, somebody without feet, and on seeing this, he immediately fell to prostration, to sujood, thanking Allah profusely for having provided him with the ability to walk, if not with the shoes. So it's again a reminder, we think that somebody who doesn't have proper this, proper that, but there's always somebody who has even less, isn't making do with even less. This incident identifies the perspectives that we can take and we should look at things. And those with a feeling of gratitude observe numerous manifestations of God's favors and then fill, it fills them with greater gratitude. I was, uh, during Ramadan, I was at Princeton University for Laylatul Qadr, and uh, one of the speakers was talking about when he started having children in his family, and he had a little one who was keeping him awake at night. He was very frustrated, as I think many of your parents can remember or still are. Um, and one of his friends gave him a way to turn around that perspective. He said, your child is waking you up. Take it as your child is waking you up for the hundred. 
you change your perspective of what you can do with this incident in your life. If your child is waking you up for the night prayer, great. It's usually pretty hard to get up for the night prayer or to do it. Now, this is a, a way for you to take advantage of that. So it, this is talking about changing one's perspective to appreciate the positive and what seems like a difficult. However, there are others who are always complaining of what they do not have or are unable to be thankful to Allah's blessings. He has bestowed upon them. Allah does not need our thanks or our gratitude. It's a benefit for us to be thankful. Because remember, God does not need anything from us. The point of asking for God's help, the, ask, the point of asking, giving God thanks for what we've been given, is a reminder for our own human mind and selves so that we can get on the right path, so that we become more humble, so that we can become more content. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. In Surah Luqman, the 31st chapter, Ayah 12, we're told, He who is grateful is grateful only for the good of his own soul. But if anyone is ungrateful, then surely Allah is self-sufficient and praiseworthy. So it's again a reminder of the concept we just talked about, that this praise, this thankfulness is not for the Creator. The Creator does not need that. It's, it's a gift for ourselves to help guide our souls. Gratitude helps slow us down, enjoy what we have rather than always waiting for the next wish to come true. Gratitude can help us recognize that we already have enough of what many people have for long been yearning. Therefore, it can help tame our ego, or nafs, to understand that if we can't find happiness in the blessings we already have, we're probably not going to find happiness with a little bit more stuff tomorrow. You see, gratitude is a sense of fulfillment that comes from not wanting more, but rather from a sense of knowing that whatever God has given you is enough. Gratitude helps us recognize other people's favors upon us. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who does not thank people does not thank Allah. So it's not just a vertical relationship. Thankfulness is a horizontal relationship with society too. Thus he made it quite clear that expressing our gratitude to Allah by thanking him also involves that we thank people who do favors for us. In another hadith, it's related, whoever does you a favor, then reciprocate. And if you cannot find anything to reciprocate, pray for him until you think you have reciprocated. Gratitude trains our minds to focus on the right things in life. And when we let our minds look for problems, we see plenty of them. Instead, if we rather look away from our problems and focus on the possibilities and solutions, we will get those too. Let's therefore use gratitude to motivate ourselves to find possibilities and solutions and not negatives. So I'll kind of conclude here with something that we can actually do, maybe that we can take away from today. Many times, hopefully many of us, after our prayers, we'll do a short amount of dhikr. I will say, astaghfirullah, I seek forgiveness of Allah, seven times, eleven times, thirty-three times. Subhanallah, glory to be God, same thing. Alhamdulillah, all praises to God or thank God. But maybe a, a technique we could use is to, instead of saying them really fast to get through the number we want to do, maybe slow it down and say, maybe for Subhanallah. Subhanallah, the sun in the sky. Subhanallah, the wind. Subhanallah, just think about nature and all the glories of God that are out there. For Alhamdulillah, can we slow down just Alhamdulillah for raising us up from our slumber this morning. Alhamdulillah for breaths of life. Alhamdulillah for the food that nourishes us today. You know, one by one, and if we get into a habit, we'll find that we start running out, uh, of, not running out of blessings, but 
you want to do more than the 33. So let's conclude by saying that having a sense of gratitude is a great blessing. And those of us who instill that sense within ourselves not only seek God's pleasure, but embody a sense of happiness. And relieving us of the many pressures and anxieties of our daily lives. <coughs> Allahumma inaka afun tahabu afafafan inna. Oh Allah, you are the forgiver, you love to forgive, so please forgive us. Amen. Oh Allah, reconcile our hearts with one another. Amen. Oh Allah, open our hearts to your guidance. Amen. Oh Allah, help us find the discipline you have placed within us to stay on the straight path. Amen. O oh Allah, strengthen us spiritually, <coughs> mentally, and physically. O oh Allah, steer the leaders of our community, city, state, and nation toward the middle path. O oh Allah, increase our awareness and compassion for all your creatures and creation. O oh Allah, help all people lead better lives along the middle path that leads to the eternal shade of your grace. Amen. Waqim as -salam.